This is David Rawlings. He is a master of swordsmanship and weapon arts with over 25 years experience and is the founder of the London Longsword Academy. Today he'll be looking at even more of the weapons and fighting styles from Elden Ring. In my many years of fighting the Kraken, <laughs> there's nothing I can find wrong with this. I highly recommend checking out the London Longsword Academy. All their links and information will be in the description. And of course, make sure to go back and check out part one if you haven't already. But without further ado, here's what a Swordmaster makes of Elden Ring. Okay, so we got you here with sort of like a Morning Star style mace. Basically, basically a, sp a spiky mace. Absolutely fine. There's no problem with using these things. You do see them turn up. You don't really see very much about them in manuals, but if you think about it, it's either held in one hand, it's held in two hands, and then it's the capacity of what the weapon can do. So obviously it's a high impact weapon, but if it's spiky, you can hit with it in any of the directions that spikes go. So you can thrust with it, you can smash with it. Now, the actions in this, they really feel like they take the same animations as they use for all the other swords. So it's no, not really any different, but that's not necessarily a problem. We have an author called Joachim Meyer, who really says to you that the, the single-handed sword, when you're holding a sword in one hand, everything that you do with that can be trained with a weapon called the Dusa, which is used for a sword, it's used for a rapier, it's used for clubs. It really, really doesn't matter. So absolutely fine. It turns into a two-handed weapon and to a degree, yep, you're going to use it like a two-handed weapon. What you have to be aware of, obviously, is that if you have so much mass at one end, it's going to be harder to realign it. So you're going to have actions that are going to drag your point down and then you're going to have to find ways of restructuring that. And there's things you can do. You can basically, you can hack and then draw your hands back and slide them along the half so that you redistribute the weight so that it's closer to the head and then you can use it again and as i say you could quite happily thrust with this it's still going to hurt like three so one thing i would say about the use of the any weapon in elden ring when used with its when it's used with a shield probably the closest thing i think you'll see to it being accurate is actually when you see some of the larger knights coming at you and they kind of come in behind the shield and then you have this tight action to the shield so certainly the animations on some of the enemies seem to be a little bit better than some of the animations that you use there's more sensibilities in the fight it's a little bit like no i'm not just going to open myself up i'm going to stay a little bit huddled i'm going to give you a jab i'm going to give you a jab and then maybe i'm going to give an expressive little action where i might beat your weapon out of the way at the same time as going through so there's some really really good bits of animation animation in the spear work, in my opinion, spear and shield work, in some of the enemy characters. The running along, thrusting with a halberd repeatedly with one arm. You don't want to do that because um, a lot of halberds are reasonably weighty. So to, to constantly advance with, in, with your weapon in one hand, um, I, I'm not entirely sure. And to do the sweeps in one hand, I'm, I'm really not so sure. A halberd on the whole, barring very, very minimal moments, I'm going to want to be holding in two hands so that I've got as much control of it as possible. They're still not insanely unwieldy and you can move them with a degree of celerity, but you need to be aware of their capacity to move. You need to be in control of that capacity. So if you're moving them in wide sweeps, it wants to be around your body so that your body is supporting them. If you're doing cuts, they want to have a possibility to have enough control in them that you can change your mind. You want to be aware of the width between you and your opponent's weapon. So that if you go underneath it, you don't go underneath it so wide, you can't come back up again. So if you invest all your energy in just hefting the thing down, how the hell are you gonna bring it back up? So you can cut and because it's a huge cleaver, the ax part is the huge cleaver on the end of it, that's gonna be sufficient to cut somebody who's unarmored and potentially remove fingers, remove hands. How much force do you need to do that? Not as much, that's as much as you need to invest in the blow. So it doesn't necessarily mean that because it's a big weapon, it needs to be a big arc. It can be quite concise, quite tight to what it needs to do, aware of the structure of the opponent's defense and willing to attack that defense from either and both sides. Yeah, okay. Um, helicopter halberd, again, I wouldn't suggest this is the best use. It's, it's, it's similar to a move called the thwart with the longsword and spinning the halberd over your head like that. Um, what do you do if you miss? It's, it's not a great use of time. So no, no I, I'm not fond of their halberd animations to be fair. So one of the things that I forgot to talk about when we're talking about halberds is 
how the shape of any part of attachment that you have on a halberd affects anything. So if you have anything that is in effect a hook, then you can hook with it. If you've got anything, even if it's a curve of an axe that goes towards the opponent, you can thrust with those things. Now, the other thing is, is that if you have the curve of the axe here and you have the beard underneath, now you can hook with the beard, but when it comes to the other end, you can thrust with that as well. So you have to look at, again, a blade or a part of a weapon's capacity to do anything. So even when we're looking at single-handed axes or two-handed axes as well, if there is a protuberance coming forwards here, you can thrust with it. So that would be a nice little thing to be able to see in games is this awareness that it's an axe, you can still thrust with it. And then not, again, a stick with a piece of metal on it, believe it or not, is not necessarily that unwieldy. It can be incredibly light. I have some single-handed handed axes and you can cut and thrust with those things easily and they will mess you up because they have a piece of sharp thing on them. So again, I think my main point with the axes is that yes, it's really nice to see sort of like something with heft being chopped through something, but it's completely possible as well to shorten strike and keep your point on effectively so you can cut through and stop and hit. So actually the spear's not too bad. It's, 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 it's pretty straightforward and simple. Um, one of the things I haven't seen, which may exist in there, is the slipping of the spear, the letting the spear kind of slide through the hands for extra extension. Um, so quite often with the spear, you will let it slip right to the end because it's fairly light in the scheme of things. You'll let the grip slide so that your hand comes right to the end. And that also allows you to change which hand you're fencing with very, very quickly. The actions where the shield is further forwards, I think I prefer more because there's more of this awareness of the shield being something to work around. Again, I would be less inclined to hold the shield here because again, it actually covers, leaves quite a lot of you uncovered. It's too close. You are going to have trouble blocking both your face. And if you block your face, then you're going to open up your leg. Now, a lot of people think that you don't cut with spears. You cut with spears. So if I miss something going to your face, I could wind and thrust underneath. But if my spear has an edge to it, because again, think of the logic of this. If your spear is that long and it's just a point, really you're only going to kind of like stab with it, maybe crack someone in the shins with it because it's still going to hurt. But if your spear has got an edge on it, it's a cut and thrust weapon. And again, if that is the length of your spearhead, you can cut with it very, very well. So for example, we might have a, a thrust that turns into a cut back at the legs. And that's a very good use of that sort of thing against the shield. So as far as little thrust is concerned, yeah, it's not too bad. Again, the, the structure of it is quite nice. It looks like they've got somebody who knows how to move to model on. Um, but again, there's quite a bit of movement that's not being used or quite a lot of potential that's not being used. In my many years of fighting the Kraken, <laughs> there's nothing I can find wrong with this. I have no idea how you would fight with an anchor. Also, I feel there's a health and safety issue because somewhere there is a boat that is just going off, completely unable to stay stationary. I kind of also feel that if you hit someone with an anchor, it's kind of going to stay stuck in them, isn't it? It's not going to like, oh, a nice little gash with an anchor. You're going to stay anchored. So when you have sort of like these two ended, um, the Darth Maul swords, where you have a sword at either end of a stick, I mean, you're not going to hold it like a quarter staff for obvious reasons, but um, in general, why not? You know, if you're holding it on the half right in the middle, then do all that. I'm not sure, again, it's your best use of the weapon. Um, I'd prefer to have something where I know I can put the point on safely without accidentally cutting off or stabbing myself, but you could do, um, and I'm sure someone has. And again, here you have this amazing ability of metal being really good at cutting through metal and in general armor is designed to stop these things. So you've got lots and lots of twirling and you're just like blood flying everywhere because armor means nothing. And miraculously, the armor isn't sort of like falling off or doing anything like this. Really, if we're fighting someone who's got breastplates, has got good armor coverage, and I really like, again, I would suggest that you get Toby Capwell in at some point to have a look at some of the armor in this because I think from my untrained eye that some of it is very 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 well observed so i'd like to see what toby capwell makes of these things however 
the use of force against these items, fully clad, fully armoured knights, and you're wailing on them with a sword, which is the very thing that armour is designed to beat, this is not good. Really, if you're going against armour, what you're trying to do is you're trying to find any point of articulation, any space that you can jam a point into. Even with the pole axes, um, when we're fighting with the pole axe, obviously you have the percussive damage that you can do to someone to shake them up, but also you have the idea that you're going to get the point of the thing and you're going to jam it even between two moving parts of a breastplate. So really just wailing on armor is not, not good. And this is not a realistic representation. Yeah, so I don't know really what else you can say about shields. I think there's that thing that if you if you can use a shield on one side, you can use it on the other. And yes, you could hit with people with it. I think you're going to die, though. I think unless you've got two really, really good semi semispherical shields that you can kind of like tuck up and roll. Um, two shields, maybe not your best use. You do get spiky shields. Um, you get shields that you can stab people with in various different ways. Um, you get shields with spikes on the front. You get shields that look like someone's welded two cellos and some spears together. Um, and those you can stab each other with as well. This is potentially an esoteric fencing style that I've not seen. So no, I don't think that fencing with uh, two shields is the best use of your time. My name is David Rawlings and I run the London Longsword Academy and despite the name we actually deal with an awful lot of different systems of fencing and different types of weaponry, all kinds of things. We're very, very accessible, we are very LBGT friendly, we have a excellent, excellent community and some very, very good new instructors coming through the works. I've been teaching this for 20 odd years so i really really know my business very very well we have a very very long established school in london you can find us online as well and we are absolutely bloody amazing if you'd like to see more of david as well as other martial and medieval style episodes make sure to like the video and let us know in the comments and i hope you'll join me in thanking david and the london longsword academy for collaborating with us on this video you can check out some of their videos as well as their other information in the description below thanks for watching